with with all of this sort of prophecy and that um, it is connecting in a very important thing. There's a terrible thing that's ahead of us as well. They speak of this wormwood mountain in Revelations, for example, that hits the earth at a time when it's the end times. And uh, it's a time when we're trying to be controlled by a barcode or a mark at 666. Okay, okay. See that bar there? Mm -hmm. That bar there? Mm -hmm. and that bar there. This is off a product. I just actually copied it off a shampoo bottle that uses the digit 6. There's three here in a row that actually that the digit, the numbers actually should be 666 under there. The 6 is two bars next to each other, exactly like that. Product and its price. Human and status. That's going to be us. Your name and your number. That's your credit card. If you don't use it and don't agree to it, you can't buy and sell. You're going to die. So you're going to have to have it. So be afraid of that, folks, and spread the word, because once we're like that, they're going to put implants on us too that are satellite tracking. If anybody knows how easy it is to satellite tracking, your new cell phones, are, if you go to the police and your partner or friend has gone missing and they've just got their cell phone, they can know exactly where you are by putting a radio signal to that cell phone and do a cross-reference and find where that person is. And these things are getting more advanced. It doesn't we, need to be switched on, either. It doesn't need to be switched on. That's what I've heard. That scares me too. Because it's some kind the only of way to switch it is to have your battery in there. Yeah, how about that? And there's this new thing that you have to update your status. We need to know who you are with your cell phone. Go and register now. Is something happening? Yeah. It's going to be part of your password. It's going to be part of our trading system. And when we like that, the elite are laughing all the way to the teenagers because they can just say, once that's happened, Hi right, folks, oh, you know what you need to do to save your economy? Now remember these words, because I've seen this in the vision and you're going to hear it. It's a, I don't know if it's Obama or somebody, but we're going to save the economy. We've got the answer. Guess what? We work harder and longer hours. That's not a bad thing. We'll save the economy. Do a bit for your country, folks. Come on. Let's get, make this economy. Let's save our people. Harder, longer hours, less reward. Uh -oh. We're going to work long hours, less reward, harder hours. Isn't that slavery? What do they give slaves? A bit of a shelter, they work them into the bloom and bone of the earth. But we're going to be enslaved, folks, by bondage. And we'll be working and forced, almost enslaved by who? We're not sure. And um, it's quite clear now, after my near-death experience, the, the Armageddon story is not really a religious war. It's a bit of a cover-up for a lot of what's going on here. It seems to be the rich versus the poor, at a time where the poor are striking back at the rich. And these uh, strange, uh, look like locusts that come in that destroy people with its stings and in Revelations. Those are helicopter gunships that are gunning down people that are going against the system. And that's what I think Armageddon is all about. And I'm afraid to say it seems very close because all the signs are near. Not only the Mayan prophecy is saying 2012, but um, there's, there's something else I need to add to this. And, and it makes it a lot clearer that nobody really has obviously any idea about when you around this cosmic tree and uh, you're interacting with it and, and asking, okay, you've asked who you are and where you come from and I got all that information, I believe. But then I'll, the next question that I asked was, how are we doing on our little planet? You know, I feel kind of like, oh, gosh, are we doing it? Are we living like you expect us? And then you, you get that information flowing back and the information was ugh, devastating. What are we doing to our people? And that every human being is connected to the creation. There's billions of people starving and hungry now, robbed of homes and the, having a chance of life, being born into poverty that is never going to be any good for even a normal human life. And if the creation is suffering on this grand scale, will the Creator allow it to get worse? And your simple re reasoning will say no. And it was made very clear to me. What do you do when a dog is sick that you love passionately and you've spent its whole life nurturing this little dog and the dog is suffering? You put it down. I think it's a very, very high probability, and um, much as I hate to say this, humanity that is suffering is going to be put down, and because of what we're doing to our own society. And if we can't make some very urgent changes now, just to show that there's some hope for us. The creation doesn't do these things to destroy people, but uh, people must realize this earth has been uh, a free from global uh, bolide impacts, meteoric impacts for 10,000 years. If you look at the moon, look at Venus, look at Mars, what do they look like? They look like Swiss cheese. And why is it that we haven't been impacted? I'll tell you a very simple answer to that. There are life carers in this universe that have deflected all those big chunks of asteroids that should be hitting the Earth long before we've even had the chance to see them. So we blase think, oh, we just don't get hit. But maybe once every few billion years or whatever, maybe we do get hit. This world has been protected because there's hope for us. And it's up to us now to try and stop the suffering. And if we just show chance, we don't have to make this big change overnight, but just show that we're starting to make education free. That is the first step. 
there is such a high probability where whatever's coming that is naturally due uh, is going to come to pass. And if, if that can be stopped because we have hope and show hope, I think we'll be saved. So we need to save ourselves here. Just hoping for ascension and sitting back and saying, yes, as long as I believe and spread the word just with goodwill, it'll be fine. We need to do things. We need to actually now make a noise and show how we can improve and stop that suffering. And if we can show that we are going in a direction, I guarantee you they'll see a bow light coming in and something is going to deflect it in the year two, around about the year 2012. I don't think it's going to be an exact day. The Mayans picked um, cosmic times to measure places. The sun is rising in the middle of the galaxy. It's all it is. It's a place of measuring like Nostradamus shows in his quatrains. I mean, Saturn and Jupiter are together and this is happening in the world and know this. And he measures it by cosmic comparisons. And you can get an approximation. That's all it is to the minds. It might even be now. It might even be in a week's time. It might even be just after 2012, 2013. But that is the general benchmark time. That is close to when something awful happens. And as much as I don't want it to happen, um, it's in the hands of humanity. Well, what can we do to stop it? That's the question. 2012. Hmm. <clears throat> the part that I dread because everybody thinks, whoa, 2012, ascension, we all saved. Uh -uh. If humanity doesn't do something about the suffering on this planet that the creation is connected to, nothing is going to stop that. That's wormwood. And it's very sad to think how, how pathetic we are that we can't do something to change what we're doing to ourselves in society. At Freedom Central, we try to provide a platform with people like yourself who have a message for humanity. What would your message be? I would say please listen to the simplicity of the uh, oneism.org uh, records of the spiritual side. The physical side of the hiddenrecords.com to see the physical origins, put the two together, question how is it that me as a non-scholar has come across this information, question how it fits into your belief system and question most of all if the creation is what we mostly believe it is, that it's something that's in connection with all of us, would the creation be in connection with all of humanity and those that are also suffering? And if it is true, and there are two billion people suffering right now, what can you do to make the difference? What can you do to spread the word of making education free? What can you do to just by word of mouth help? And that's what it is, it's a word of mouth thing. If you can just speak to friends and Say, well, go look at that oneism.org site, but, but challenge it, question it. I'm available on, on Facebook, for heaven's sakes. I love people interacting with it. And there's a lot of people debating it, and I've had nine times out of ten, most people being convinced. There's a lot of people that have very staunch religion and don't see it because of their habit of belief. Don't change your habit of belief. Take just little pieces of it at a time, and when you're ready for the rest, you'll be ready. It might even take another couple of years, but don't rush it, and, but put it to the test. Question it, challenge it. Wayne Herschel, it's been an honor and a privilege to have your time today. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure. Thanks.